Hey, hey, welcome back. On my way home this bright, bright afternoon. And I am Miss Mandy. We are talking today about one of my favorite topics, which is spending money. And I'm not talking about just any old spending. I'm talking about a really cool way that you can spend money in order to help build your wealth. So let me set the stage for you. Back in 2018, before the housing market went crazy, we bought our first house. And before that, we were a family of three living in a two bedroom apartment. It was sub level. We didn't have a yard. And one of the best features of this house we were buying is that it had a huge yard and it had hills. The front was on a hill. The back had a little hill. I could just see my kids sledding down that. I could see myself sledding down it if I'm uh, entirely honest there. But you know, we could see ourselves playing in it. We could see ourselves having fun doing picnics and bonfires and those kinds of things that you do in a backyard. Well, of course, along with that great big backyard came a lot of mowing and we couldn't afford a riding mower. In fact, my grandpa bought us the push mower that we had. So we had to push mow our yard. And this was October and in Ohio, October can either be really hot or really cold or somewhere in the middle. I don't really know which it's weather roulette here. And uh, for instance, it snowed this morning and now it's looking like this outside. But that's beside the point. We had a push mower and it would take us more than two hours to mow the lawn. And even on a nice day when you spend two hours mowing the lawn, you're about to die, right? Unless you're super fit. I'm not super fit. So that didn't even include weed eating or edging or any of the things that actually make a yard look nice. So what we decided to do was bite the bullet and get a lawn company to actually mow our lawn for us. And that was the first time I had ever outsourced anything in my life. And guess what? It was super nice. In fact, they would come and they spent 30 minutes doing what took us two hours and then some because they actually did the weed eating. They actually did the edging and they, they did all the things that made the lawn look really nice. So it actually looked really nice for the first time since we bought the house. It took them less time. They were happy because they were getting paid and we were happy because we got to spend our two plus hours doing something we actually enjoyed doing instead of dying pushing a lawnmower around the yard. So that's just one example of how we buy back our time. And in this video, I want to dive into that a little bit more and go over what it means to buy back your time, why the wealthy do this, what is the value behind it, and some ideas on how you can start buying back your time, even if you don't have a lot of uh, disposable income at first. Most importantly, stick around to the end of the video because we're going to go over how the wealthy do this differently than you or me because it is different for the poor and middle classes and how the wealthy do it. It's di there's a difference between them that is a key to success in this area. And I can't wait to get to that, but we have to do all the other stuff first. Fundamentals before fun, right? So what is buying back your time? Buying back your time is just simply spending money for someone else to do a task you would otherwise do yourself. You might have guessed that from the, the example or you know even the title, buying back your time, right? But whether we realize it or not, we do this already. Even if you don't get your lawn outsourced like we do, you do it in some aspects. When your car breaks down, you probably take it to a mechanic, right? You don't look up how to do it yourself. You don't buy the parts. We don't really go into how to create, how to fix a vehicle on our own, right? I don't know about you, but I've never tinkered with the inner workings of my car. And I guess a very small percentage of the world has because mechanics have a high pay rate, right? So I never wanted to be a mechanic, but I do need a car. Fortunately, there are lots and lots of people out there whose sole job it is to fix cars. They have the right equipment for it. They have the time for it. They get paid for it. So that's a benefit for them. It's a benefit for you because you don't have to spend the time, energy, and frustration, in my case, doing it yourself. My time is better spent elsewhere. And that is exactly why the rich buy back their time. Their time is better spent elsewhere. They take that principle of the car going to the mechanic rather than doing a car repair yourself, and they apply it to every single part of their lives. And they know what they're good at, they do what they do best, they delegate the rest. 
I said in a prior video, that's not my catchphrase. That's one of Garrett Gunderson's. Go check him out if you're into wealth building. He's great. But I love that catchphrase because it's so true. The wealthy look at their day-to-day -day tasks and they ask if the task they're doing, one, is what they want to do, two, is what they're good at, and three, if it's actually worth the time they're spending. And if we start to ask ourselves the same questions, we start to think like a wealthy person and ask yourself those questions on everything on our calendars, we can begin to see where our time is being spent inefficiently. What does it mean? Well, if you're spending your time inefficiently, it's when you're doing something that you don't want to do, you're not good at, or waste time that could be better spent elsewhere or more productively spent elsewhere, I should say. So I mentioned the lawn and I mentioned having Oh, I haven't mentioned that yet. Um, well, let's backtrack just a minute. You know, buying back your time is great, but it actually does cost money, right? And if you don't have a lot of discretionary income or no discretionary income, this might be a little bit too advanced for you. You might have to take some steps back, learn how to make your cash flow more efficient. I have lots of videos on those. Check out those. Check out Garrett Gunderson. That's where I get a lot of my inspiration from. And I, I build off of a lot of his topics, putting my own spin on them. And I think that it is essential that you're in the right place when you start to do this because you can't spend money you don't have, right? And that's fine. I'm just on the starting edge of this myself. I mentioned the lawn I do and now I'm starting to um, have my groceries delivered for the first time in my life. I used to do the pickup and that saved me a little time but having them delivered is a whole new ball game because I have to pay for that service and it has saved me more time than I even thought possible and frustration. That's a whole other video. So there's the lawn, there's the groceries that I've mentioned, but what are some other areas where we can buy back our time? Well, you love cleaning the house? Because I don't. That's on my list to get out of my plate. Laundry, there's pet grooming and walking. I hate bathing our pets because it's such a hassle. They hate it. They don't sit still for it. It takes a long time. We have a husky and her fur just soaks up water like a sponge. We don't have a lot of time to walk our pets and I'd love to be able to hire a, a dog walker. Transportation, you can outsource your transportation. Think of your commute every morning and as people are going back to work more and more these days to actually end the office, how much time, how much better could that time be spent with you going 30 minutes one way, 30 minutes back at the end of the night? I'm using my time right now, right? Um, home improvements. You can hire project managers to manage your home improvements, to yell at the contractors if they need to, and you don't have to deal with that. You can hire out landscaping if you want a nice front yard, but you have no idea how to do it and you don't like that kind of thing, then have somebody else do it for you. Cooking, you can have a personal chef on the high end of things, or you can order some of those subscription meals like HelloFresh and uh, Blue Apron and all the others that go along with it. Have somebody do your taxes. TurboTax is great, but it takes a lot of your time. And if your time could better be spent elsewhere, and if a tax professional can save you more, maybe it's worth it to you. Like I said, car maintenance, car repairs and maintenance, changing oil, changing the windshield wipers. Now we do change our own windshield wipers and light um, headlights. My husband does that for us. But And if it was up to me, I'd probably do it on my own as well. But bigger maintenance things we have done for us. Even home maintenance, like car maintenance, you can have that outsourced. Changing the furnace filters or having the furnace serviced, having your chimney sweeped if you have a wood-burning fireplace. Those are things that have to be done, but you may not want to do them yourself. And you can even outsource clothes shopping these days. There's, you know, personal stylists that'll pick out things that they think will look good on you and you get to choose whether you keep them or not. They'll send them to your house. You don't even have to go to the store. You get to try them on and if you don't like them, you send them back. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, that's just a short list of what I could think off the top of my head and if I'm sure there are more out there. So if you think of ones that I haven't said already, please drop them in the comments below so everybody can benefit. Um, so yeah, we've reached that cool part of the video. What you've been waiting for is why, sorry, my notes get in the way, how the wealthy do this differently. And I think this is such a, an important distinction because 
you and me, we think it feels great when we get enough income to hire the lawn service or hire a cleaning person. It feels really good when you have, get to stop doing that, that thing that you didn't like doing and you get to spend your time elsewhere. But we're using our income to do it. We're still trading money for time and time for money, right? We trade our time for that money and then we trade our money for that time. It's like an endless cycle. The wealthy don't do this. And that's the difference. What the wealthy do is they use their income to buy assets that cash flow. And those cash flowing assets is what pays for them to do the things that they do, like buying back their time. Once you get that mind, mindset under your belt, and it's a hard one to grasp, I know it is a hard one to grasp because I have worked and traded my time for money my entire life. And I'm not at a point where my assets cash flow yet. I'm just beginning to get down that journey, but I can't wait until I get there. And then the other distinction is they use that time that they're saving to add more value. They invest it somewhere. They either invest it in themselves by getting more sleep or going to the gym and looking their personal best, eating right, using a nutritionist or a personal trainer to look their best. I mean, investment in yourself is really important because if you're not your best mentally, physically, and emotionally, you can't add value to the world. And that's the game that the wealthy are in, value creation. They create value and they get thanked with money, right? When you solve the world's problems, you get thanked in the form of dollar bills. So they use that money to invest not only in themselves, but in their businesses. They make the right connections. They talk to the right people. They network. They set up business meetings. They create new ideas and solve new problems. And all the while collecting experiences that they've never had before in the name of business. That is how the wealthy buy back their time. So like I said, the first piece of that, just a quick summary, is that they use cash flowing assets. They don't use their income. They use cash flowing assets to fund buying back their time. And yes, it does take a while to get there, so don't be discouraged, but you can get there eventually, I promise. I'm, I'm doing it and you can follow my journey if you want to. And then secondly, they use that time to invest it in a way that will give them a return. They don't just spend their time laying around and watching Netflix. Although if that's really good for your mental and emotional health, maybe you do that sometimes. I'm not one to judge because I do that almost every night. Um, but they they go out and they network and they travel and they create lots of experiences that they've never had before. And they get to use other people's money, other businesses' money, their money coming from businesses to do that. And I think that is what is super cool about this. Once we can get there, we've really made it, right? That's what we feel like. So what it boils down to is that if you want to be wealthy, you study the habits of the wealthy, right? You study how they made it to their successful place in life. You don't resent them because they've got more than you. Even though it's really easy to do that, you think, wow, they, they have everything. How is it that they have everything and I have absolutely nothing in life? How did they get that lucky head start on life? Well, if you stop thinking that way and you just start studying what they do and you begin to do those things yourselves, that's when you become successful like they are successful. And slowly but surely it turns things in your favor it's like we don't have to reinvent the wheel we just have to know how to read the roadmap so that's all I've got for you today don't forget to drop a line in the comments below if you think of a few more ways to buy back your time than I have suggested here and if you enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up button to help the channel out that's all I've got for you today until next time I will see you then Bye.